my God, Father, we thank you. We can call on Jesus. God, we glad we can call on Jesus. He, he won't let you down. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We, we have confidence in you. We know you never fail us and you never let us down. Thank you for being so faithful. Woo, Jesus. And you know we be calling on you, God. And I'm so glad that you answer and you keep us and you watch over us. And we're calling on you day and night. I don't know how you handle all this calling, God. But we are grateful that you are a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Father, bless even now, God, as we share your word. We thank you for the privilege of sharing and imparting your word. We ask now, God, that you stand in my body. Think with my mind, preach with my lips. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be found acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, my strength, oh, Jesus, and my redeemer. In the matchless, marvelous name of Jesus. And everybody that's been calling on him, come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad I can call on him and get an answer. Grab your Bibles and go to the book of Hebrews. New Testament book. Work your way toward Revelations. Hebrews. I always tell you we're not talking about coffee. Hebrews chapter 10. We're going to only look at three verses. Verse 23, 24, and 25. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 23 through 25. Continuing in my It's Time series. I want to just tap this today and then let you go. Again, happy Memorial Day to all the veterans. I'm just loving Vanetta's dress there. You know, you, I'm, I'm, I'm Air Force, you know. She's a true patriot. Not only is it a beautiful dress, it's a celebratory dress. I wish she would have told me I would have bought my flag outfit. We could have twinned it out today. <laughs> Amen. Well, I think there's a flag day in, the, in July. Right, flag day. They still celebrate flag day? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to get out. I'm going to get my flag out for that 4th of July. You wear that on 4th of July weekend. <laughs> We're we going to go out together and, and show them how to really do it. What's a, what a beautiful dress. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 to 24 and 25. I'm reading out of the King James Version. And my Bible reads thusly. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to do what? Love and to, to good works. Mm -hmm. Let's say that again. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, yes. not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a matter of some, but exhorting one another so much the more as ye see the day approaching. This is the word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the name of our God. You may be seated in the presence. I want to preach as it relates to its time. It's time to come together to be better. Come together. It's time to come together. Somebody say to be better. It's time to come together to be better. Amen. Come together to be better. Just tell your neighbor that you sit next to. Whisper, we got to get closer together. We got to get closer together. Many people have avoided the epistle to the Hebrews and consequently have robbed themselves of the practical spiritual help 
that they need. Some have avoided this book because they are afraid of it. Because the warnings that are in Hebrews have made many people uneasy when they read it. If you want to study the book of Hebrews, you got to know that there are five characteristics to the epistle. It is a book of evaluation, exhortation, examination, expectation, and exaltation. Do I have a witness? This 10th chapter of Hebrew, it emphasizes the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ in contrast with the imperfect sacrifices that were offered under the Old Testament. As your pastor, I told you many times in the Old Testament, they had sacrifices of doves and lambs and other birds and those sacrifices were temporary in nature. And I gave you an analogy that said they, they um, removed sin temporarily. It's like uh, taking out a garbage and they put the garbage in the bag, but it never left the house. And that when Jesus, at the Lamb of God, died on Calvary's cross, uh, he took the garbage all the way out. Not just to a dump, but it was eradicated forever. Do I have a witness that Jesus Christ was the perfect sacrifice compared to all the Old Testament sacrifices that were made? So our Lord's superior priesthood belongs to uh, a better order. Uh, Hebrews talks about the order of Melchizedek versus the order of Aaron. Because Aaron's priesthood was not like Melchizedek. And you remember it was Aaron who uh, crafted the golden calf uh, in, uh, uh, in the desert. Uh, he, so he could never have the purity of sacrifice. So Jesus is a shadow of the perfect sacrifice of Melchizedek and, and not Aaron. And so it functions on the basis of a better covenant. In a better sanctuary, Hebrews talks about a sanctuary that's in heaven and God will bring uh, everything that's on heaven on earth and put it on earth. Mm -hmm. And so all of this depends on a better sacrifice, which really is the theme of chapter 10 here. The writer believes, uh, I, we believe it's Paul, uh, presents three benefits that explain why the sacrifice of Jesus is superior to all the old sacrifices. Uh, you'll see in verse 1 through 10, he says, Christ's sacrifice takes away sin. That's what I talk about. Takes the garbage all the way out. Uh, and secondly, Christ's sacrifice need not be repeated. It's done once. In the Old Testament, they came back over and over, sacrificing again, shedding blood for the for sins, trying to cover the sins with lamb and goats and sheep goats and uh, doves and turtle doves. Uh, it had to be repeated over. But in Jesus, one time on Calvary's cross was sufficient. Right? And so that's what you got to tell the devil when he come putting your sins in your face, making you feel guilty. Although Jesus died one time and his sacrifice was sufficient to cleanse me of my nastiness, Lord Jesus. Not only of my sins of yesterday, but my sins of today, listen, and forevermore. And so his blood even covers forward, backwards, and in time. All at the same time. Who I'm getting happy just talking about it. And so Christ's sacrifice need not be repeated. That's verse 11 through 18. But where our text is today in verse 23 through 25, uh, is Christ's sacrifice opens the way to God. That he is the bridge over all of our troubled waters. And that's verse 19 to 39 where we find our text today. You see, no old covenant worshiper would have been bold enough to try to enter the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle, right? You remember the tabernacle? There's an outer court, there's an inner court, and there's a Holy of Holies. Everybody say outer court. Outer court. Say inner court. Inner court. And Holy of Holies. Uh, in the Old Testament, many people never try to approach the Holy of Holies. In fact, the priest would go in there, but he would only go in there once a year. It was so holy, he didn't want to mess with it. 
because he knew he was tainted. And there was no perfect priest, but he would go one year to present the sacrifice uh, uh, unto God uh, on the day of atonement. So he went once a year and he would go through a thick veil. And go up into the Holy of Holy. And that is the veil uh, on Calvary's cross that was ripped in two. That opens a way that you and I can go in there for ourselves. You see, in the Catholic Church, the priest represents the only one who can talk to God. So they come into the, uh, the church and they sit in a box and, and they talk to the priest. And they walk going through the priest to get to God. They have to confess it to the priest and the priest have to take it to God. And they pay their alms and they pay their gifts to the priest. But, but, but and Luther let us know, Martin Luther, the great theologian, uh, when he's uh, tagged the, uh, the, 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 the ten uh, requirements of a Christian that uh, in Jesus, who is our high priest, he's already made the sacrifice. So I don't need another priest to get me there. That in Jesus, I can enter in while I'm in my house and, and, and reach the holy of holy. By myself. It's nice to have a pastor, but my pastor, if my pastor, I can't get to him, all I got to do is open my mouth and God will hear me and visit me and commune with me and talk with me. He talks and he walks with me. And sometimes we don't understand that you, when you walk through church doors, you're walking through church doors under the veil of the blood of Jesus to worship the Father. Oh, help me, Jesus. And so we take it for granted that we come into worship. But Jesus made it possible that you can come to worship. Because if Jesus did not die, you could not come into the presence of God by yourself. In fact, if you came there with sin on your life, you would drop dead immediately. Because his holiness could not tolerate your sin or my sin. Preach Pastor Maxwell. And so, so they came once a year and... And so that was a thick veil that separated the holy place from the holy of holies. It was a barrier between people and God. And only the death of Christ could tear the veil. You see that in Mark 15 and 38. And open the way to the heavenly uh, sanctuary where God dwell. And let me explain that real quickly. Because when we come into worship, we are actually coming into the holy of holy. The heavenly sanctuary. It's a place where heaven and earth intersects. Mm -hmm. And we don't understand it. That's why God really don't want us to miss church. Because all week long we've been on the earthly level. But when we actually come in his sanctuary, it's an intersection between heaven and earth. I'm trying to help you all to understand why we worship. And that's why you can't come into worship just any kind of way. Acting like you don't really care. I'm just coming to church. No, you're coming to an intersection between the heaven and earth where the presence of God tabernacles to meet you and so to, to, for you to meet God. Uh, and so the language of this part of the chapter, when you get into chapter 10, it really starts at verse 19. The, the language is a gracious invitation for you to come. Mm, everybody with me? It says, it has language in there. It says, let us draw near, let us hold fast, and let us consider one another. The three attributes of worship. Now, let, let us draw near to God. Let us hold fast in our faith and our profession. And let us consider who we fellowship in with. Yeah. Loving one another and provoking each other to good deeds and good works. Don't just come to church, but, it, but, but you should be sharpening me. I should be sharpening you. And it should provoke love between one another, uh, forgiveness of one another, Lord Jesus. And we practice what we preach here so when we go out in the world, they can tell us that we love one another, that they want to love God. And so this threefold invitation, uh, drawing near and holding fast and considering one another, hinges uh, on our boldness to enter the holiest. And the boldness or the freedom of speech rests on the finished work of our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the only reason we can do all of this. Because he said it is finished. He, he finished the work. He killed sin and held death in the grave so it could not raise up and jump in your face and jump in your life. Uh, he finished it on a day of atonement. Uh, it is finished and a high priest could not enter the holies of holy unless he had a blood sacrifice and Hebrew talks about it more than one time a blood sacrifice and so the, the priest would come in on that once a year holding a blood sacrifice 
representing a, a, a typology of the shed blood that Jesus would one day uh, uh, shed for your sins and my sin. And so, so the priest walks in with this, all his blood, he can barely hold his, all the blood from the goats uh, and the lambs. And he comes to the blood sacrifice to pour it into the basin. Uh, the, the, uh, represent uh, our uh, deliverance and he goes out pay us homage and then he goes out but, uh, but in Christ, Christ is the priest, the lambs the sacrifice all of that at one time uh, he's a, he, he, he sacrifices and receives it at the same time uh, uh, he's on every end of the sacrifice He's, he, he completely does it so that you don't have to ever do it again. He, he completely washes away your sin. He completely sacrifices that you may be free. He completely uh, takes away the shame and the guilt and the lies of the enemy. He completely, completely does it. I don't know about you. It makes me happy to serve Jesus. And so our entrance, our own individual entrance in invitation into God's presence is not because of the blood of animals, but because of Christ shed his blood and provides an open way into God's presence. It's a new and fresh way. They didn't have that in the Old Testament. And some even today in Judea uh, and in Israel are still practicing the old way. Mm hmm and so here in verse 23 where we read it, he's saying forsaking uh, their confession on Jesus Christ uh, by going back. He's telling them, don't go back to the old way. Stay fixed on Jesus and his faithfulness. And while you stay fixed on Jesus, uh, uh, consider one another, which I'm, this is my sermon, really the heart of it. Consider one another. Come together to be better. Right, right. That, that you 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 can't do church in isolation. You 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 can't have an order against your brother and sister and never try to reconcile. It, it may it's not comfortable reconciling, but but because of the shed blood of Jesus, I must give the best effort to be in relationship with my brother and, and sister, even though you got on my last nerves, even though you talked about me, Lord Jesus. Because sometimes it's the enemy talking about me through you. And so I'm not going to give the enemy no glory. I'm going to come to win you to Christ and to reconcile with you and to love you and forgive you. Because I'm still a sinner that God is working on to make me better. And so I'm talking, I want to forgive you because I know you are in your process too. And so I got to have the grace to say, uh, okay, you came out of your face. You talked out of your neck. I forgive you. You had a bad day. But I'm going to love you in spite of because the blood of Jesus uh, is so invested in you and me. We don't have no time to be fighting one another. Oh, I'm trying to help you. And so the enemy like us to fight one another, be angry with another. One person sit on this side. Other ones sit back here, never talking to one another forever. That's not worship. You can't worship that way. We got to clean that up and get it right. Get on the call, meet and have some tea and reconcile this thing. We may not be able to walk together the same way we did, did in the past, but we at least can forgive one another. Right? I may have what is called a mispuff. May the Lord watch between me and thee when we ask them. So it's basically, it's three of us walking. You got your road, here's a road here, and Jesus is walking in between us, and we're not touching no more, but he's still between us. Hallelujah! Help me, Jesus. Oh, Lord. And so we got to hold fast. Let us consider one another. Because fellowship and worship, my God, is with God. See, fellowship and worship can never be selfish. You can't be it's coming to church just for you. I got to come get my blessing. No. We got to come get our blessing. Because if my sister and my brother is not being blessed, I, I can't. I just come celebrate my blessing. In fact, I need to pass my blessing to my brother and sister. And so fellowship with one of the Christians in the assembly this is why God wants us to come to church and even remind our brothers and sisters to come. Because being absent from the church assembly uh, is not what you just get from God, but is what you can contribute to the worship. 
God is interested in what you contribute to the worship experience that has an impact on your brothers and sisters. And listen, and on the heart of God. Because God likes you to touch his heart with your worship. And so when we sing songs and we rehearse on Thursday and Saturday, we're not just rehearsing to please you. We're rehearsing to touch the heart of God. If it don't please you, ain't my issue. But if I please God, I believe it'll do something for you too. And when you learn how to worship to touch the heart of God and you come to church to touch the heart of God, it changes the way you think. You're not waiting for somebody to perform to get you up out of your seat. I don't know about you, but I'm out of my seat even when I'm sitting down in the spirit. I'm just rejoicing. God, I could have been dead. I, I, I should have died so many times, but you kept me. I, I shouldn't even be here, but I'm blessed and highly favored. And I'm so glad to uh, enter your door. Oh, enter the gates with thanksgiving in my heart and enter the courts with praise. It didn't have to be like that. I did some stupid things, but you can't kept me any. You kept me anyhow. Oh, Jesus. So it's not what you get from worship. And so I hear people, and sometimes I always get texts. Some of y'all text me, Pastor, I'm not making it to church. I, I heard so many of the craziest excuses for not coming to church. And I can be honest, I made some myself. <laughs> I can't, I can't. Brother Pastor, I can't. <laughs> I got a little cold. Next thing you know, you down there grooving to the Sunday brunch. You, the Sunday brunch and breakfast, you grooving. You just told me you ain't going to be there because you're not feeling well. Then you put it on Facebook. I'm like, what well, y'all? Come on. I see you there at 10 a.m. getting your brunch on. Stop that, y'all. Just, just, just don't even text me. Don't come. <laughs> Lord Jesus. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm not the policeman. I ain't trying to police you. But I don't want to miss church. My wife just said, we got to take a day off, even when I didn't have to serve at Metropolitan. But I was there anyway because I, was, I wanted to have an encounter with God. But I also wanted to make my contribution to worship because me being present may make a difference in another brother and sister's life who's hurting right now, who's coming for deliverance and healing and renewal. A single mama who's carrying the weight of her whole family and she just run into a brother in the street who say, hey, I carry the baby for you. That may be transformational for her. Let me grab the baby in the bags and walk in with you. She had nobody carry a bag the whole week. But because I came to church and I grabbed a bag, it's ties that bind us together. Everybody say the word together. Because we, we, we all have a spiritual center that binds us together. Y'all ready to take a few notes? Because I got to get out of here. I got to let y'all go too. And so what I'm trying to tell you about worship, worship is a group project. It's a team. It's a group project. Right? So this Hebrews 10, 20, 23, I'm going to read it in a uh, NIV version. It says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some in the habit of doing. So he's inferring that there's a lot of people in the habit of not coming to church, even though they are disciples of Jesus Christ. He's saying, no, no, don't, don't, don't get to that place. And today technology is, is tension because I've been at worship through technology and I had a good time through te technology and that's sufficient because I got what I want. See how selfish we become? And don't even tithe uh, and use the technology to bring your tithes. That's one, that's a whole nother issue. But really it's, it's, it's a lack of accountability. I can stay in isolation and see that's what the enemy wants us to do in our pain never come to church and stay in our house because the house represents where the pain is at and so I can't get deliverance because I'm I got I've incubated the pain even though I'm watching it through the through the television but I'm not being delivered from the pain so when I leave my house I enter in to worship I'm entering into my healing. I'm entering into, into my deliverance. I'm entering into the time of prayer before service. Because the time of prayer before service may be the very thing that break the yoke of my life. And run, listen, the demons away that's, that's hawking you and around you that's trying to attack you. 
And so the implication of today's text is, I want you to write this about, the word together. Together is God's plan. I didn't come up with this. I think a lot of people think pastors created church. Most pastors don't even want to accept their call. But we do anyway. Anybody, any witnesses, ministers, deacons? We do, because if you don't, you know, God puts a heavy hand on you and won't release you. he keep you up at night. That's what he did to me. I was like, no, I'm going to be an accountant. I'm going to be a CPA. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a businessman. I'm going to be counting Benjamins. I'm not doing all that church. They don't pay folk up in church. I'm going to count. I'm going to be a, be a multi-millionaire before I'm 30. I did that, but that didn't make me happy. That didn't satisfy me. In fact, it got me in more trouble. The more money I had, I was immature at 26 years old. I had multi-million dollars. It, it, it just messed my life up. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. You see, people think that money will cure things. But no, you can be have all the money, but there's a lot of rich people jumping in, tra in front of trains right now while we're talking. But together, write it down, is God's plan. God's plan is always about together. Second Together isn't always easy. Come on, everybody say, ouch, together. Ouch. Now, the question is, are you making it hard? Yes. Yes. Together isn't always easy, but are you making it hard? Are you coming with the two, the attitude? Are you uh, uh, holding grudges? Are you being nasty? Are you making people uncomfortable? Are you uh, less invitational? You don't know how to be a nice host in God's house. Every one of us should be a host. Be ready to, 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 to love people as they come through the door. You've been coming here all these years and you don't know how to love a person who's new to the church? A new person joins the choir and a certain section of the choir don't want them in my alto section. What kind of hell is that? That's demonic. They got gifts to join the, 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 the deacon board or the ushers. We don't want them. We already, we already got our squad. That ain't biblical. We have to be invitational and welcome people in that don't look like you, dress like you. If they gentrify this community and maybe some white folks, hello God, coming up in here and I'm so glad, come on up in here. If you a human person, black, brown, polka dot, Chinese, come up in here and get saved and be delivered and be healed. And if you don't want certain people up in here, you might not be saved. Because when you go to heaven, the Bible says in Revelation, the nations and the tongues will gather around his throne. Black men and white men, Jew and Gentile, Protestant and Catholic, tongue talking and, and non-tongue talking. All that going to be up in there. I'm trying to tell you, together is God's plan. Ooh, Lord Jesus. And together isn't always easy. The church is a hospital as well as a healing place, right? So we have to bring sickness in the church. Do you know that God can handle your sickness? And then some people say, I'm so glad I'm not sick. Everybody got some kind of sickness. Because all of us in this room right now got bacteria in us. And if I went inside your stomach, I would see worms and nastiness, all kinds of stuff. And do you realize that our body could not function without some nastiness in it? Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got, you got all kinds of critters up in your body. Help us, Jesus. And so it's not easy for your body to handle the, the, the interaction of your organs and systems and, and working together at one accord. It's not easy for the human body to, to operate. That's why Paul says in Corinthians 12 that, that we are many members but one body. Right? Um, and I can't be a, a hand and a foot and an ear and a nose all at the same time. But I, I got to be who God calls me to be. Because together is not easy. And, and, and somebody said, I can't remember the theologian. He said, that's why he recommend marriage. He said, because when you get married, you got to live together with another person. And it's not easy. All you single people that can't wait to be married, God bless you. Whew. It looks greener on the other side. And I'm not trying to put down marriage, but marriage is not easy. If you're getting married to make things easy, you're making a mistake. It ain't for easiness. It requires, listen, a crucifixion of yourself 
so you can be synergized with another person to walk in sacred oneness together. One mind, one finances, one agree. And that to get agreement, ain't, ain't gonna listen, to get agreement out of two people who come from different backgrounds, right? It ain't easy. My mama came up with no debt. I told you, when I, when I moved my mama, I went to and I pulled her phone out and we walked out with all her stuff. It was so easy. We didn't have to call bill collectors. We didn't have to, all we had to do was pull the phone and that was it, no debt. So I didn't know about debt when I came in the Air Force. And my wife came up differently from me. And she introduced me to credit cards. I was like, what is that? What's a credit card? She had, she had diners and Macy's and Discover. She had stuff. I'm like, Discover what? You know? And she introduced me to that. I'm like, dang, God, I didn't know this was, I, is that real money? You mean I can give a card and they're going to give me a gift? <laughs> I thought it was a gift. <laughs> I had no idea that they were charging me 29% interest. Ain't nothing free but the blood of Jesus about salvation salvation is the only thing free that's so costly for you he's the sacrifice and so together is God's plan let me just close it out now together is God. what I say together is not easy right together thirdly takes a choice it takes a choice you got to choose to be together a conscious choice you just can't just do it. We gotta do it. It takes a choice. Choose this day who you're gonna serve, whether it be God or man. So when you make a choice to serve God, you are choosing God's people. That's right. You can't not like people and, and choose and choose church, choose That's Christ. Right. That's right. You might have issues with people, but you still got to do the work to learn, to grow, to be transformed and renewed. So you gotta choose to be with God and God's people. Together is a choice. Are you single? You got your nice apartment? You build? You got you know a lot of money in the bank? You you 40 years old and you want to get married? That's a big choice because I work all this time to get what I got. That's what I hear all the time from a lot of people. I put I'm not just gonna let somebody come in and mess it all up. I done put all my time. God worked all hard through you. You didn't really have the sweat equity. Naked you came into the world and naked you gonna go out with a nice nice a nice outfit on. But in between that nakedness and that outfit, God blessed you to get an education. God opened the door for you to have a nice job. God put the money in the bank and, and tested whether you be a good steward. You saved some money. And yes, you should not let anybody just come into your house. Because the Bible says, don't cast the pearls of God to swine. And some of you are dating swine. And so stop casting your goodness to swine. Stop, stop giving it up in the sheets to swine. Stop playing around with swine. If you got mess, if you won't dine with swine, you just might be get some fine wine. Preach Pastor Maxwell. And so God is it, but you make a choice. Will you choose a saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled person? See, a lot of people are choosing a, just a saved person. Because I don't want to be unequally yoked, so I want somebody saved. You saved? Yes. I ain't never been to church. Yes, I'm saved. You asked if I was saved, so you never asked me saved from what? <laughs> Shoot. I, I'm saved. I'm saving money. I'm saved. Uh, I, I should have died. I got, I got off the aircraft safely. I got saved from that flight. I got saved from some Negroes that were going to rip me a save from what? And so you got to stop interviewing people more. Are you saved? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is Savior and Lord? Do you worship him? Have you surrendered your life to him? Stop having a date with people. Why, why date somebody that's not saved and put yourself even at risk for falling in love with them? And you know you're going to be unequally yoked. Preach, Pastor Maxwell. Because it's a choice you're making. You can't live a life being unequally yoked. I don't want my kids to have a divided mind about who they are. Uh, I need them to have a single mind that Jesus Christ is Savior and Lord. And he's the one who's keeping us here today, day and night, every day. He's the one who got us, and we got to have a single mind about it. So, so it's a choice. I mean, you, you, you choose it. You choose it. Uh, can I give you something else? When we get together... I want you to write the reasons about getting together. When we get together, what happens? When we get together, what happens? It's all in the text there. It's all in there because he, he, he loaded that text. He says, you know, we consider how we spur each other 
toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, and some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. So the, the writer who is Paul knows that the day, the day, capital D, the day of judgment is coming. The day that Christ is going to break the sky. There's not going to be a lot of warning, but the Christians should be able to read some of the signs. So you go to Matthew 24, you want to know what's going to happen? Read Matthew 24, and you, he gives a lot of the signs. You won't be able to tell summer from winter. The weather is going to be jacked up. Uh, it's going to talk about famine and pestilence that's in the land. There's going to be diseases and people are going to be dropping dead, but they, they ain't going to know. The CDC is not going to really know, but they're going to act like they're going to know. We in that time. Uh, there are going to be wars and rumors of wars. Nation going to be rising against nation. Kingdoms against kingdom. Uh, we have all those things. These are, these are signs that it says, but this is not the end yet. Not yet. Not yet. Right? And, and so one of the greatest signs is that the gospel will be preached to every nation in the world. And over the last 10, 13 years is the first time that the gospel had reached every nation in the world. And so, and so that means he can come at any time. And so you want to be found at being, uh, doing your father's business. You don't want to be shacking Lord Jesus. And Jesus can come at any time. You, you don't want to be in the stench of a relationship that's messing up your mind. You don't want to be sinning. You got to make up your mind because he may come anytime. anytime. So the day of atonement. And so he wants together, he says, so uh, it, when we come together, number one, we call out the best in each other. Yeah. Write that down. Uh -huh. When we come together, we call out the best. Your gifts should provoke my gifts. Yeah. So when the music ministry ministers like they did this morning, they make preaching easy. Come on, come on. I can't wait to preach. Yeah. You see, Dennis already preached the first part. He, had, he hands me the baton and I can preach the second part. Because his gifts stirred me, and the choir stirred me. And, and, and when and you came out uh, uh, early in the morning at 8 o'clock, uh, Minister Valerie's praying. He's, he's stirring the atmosphere. He's crying out to God, and we got the lights down a little bit. Uh, comfort you. You got to make sure you protect the door when the lights are out, by the way. Uh, make sure who's coming in this place. Uh, but you stir me preparing me to preach. So I'm listening to the prayers uh, going through and permeating the walls because we call out the best in each other. Did you write that down? Secondly, we, we, we call out to God for each other. We call out to God for each other. Right? Here it is. Can I count on you to pray for me, with me, and over me? That's why we have to make sure we can pray and learn the fullness of what prayer really is. Because a lot of us, we're just saying the same prayers over and over. We've got to go beyond the same prayers. And if you're saying the same prayers over and over, you're not growing in your prayer life. And you need to learn and participate in 21 days so you can learn how to pray. Listening to others pray on the phone for 21 days creates a new habit in your head. That's why it's 21 days. It takes at least 21 days to create a habit. And so if you come on the three seasons of 21 days, you start learning to pray. You start being able to pray publicly and openly. You come out of your shyness and God moves it upon your heart and stirs up the gift in you come on, come on. and so we, we we call out to God for each other uh, there's a, a text in 1st Samuel 23 while David was at at Horesh in the desert of Ziph he learned that Saul had come out to take his life and Saul's son Jonathan went to David at Horesh and helped him find strength in God so we see Jonathan who's the son of the of David's enemy come out uh, to stir up and give him strength in God. So brothers and sisters have to keep, keep strengthening each other. We have a lot of secrets. A pastor, you know, so and so and so sick. You have the right to privacy. I'm not trying to say you don't. But don't tell nobody. Do you realize that's the hardest thing to do? Is not to have, because the scripture says, when two or more touch and agree, I'm in the midst. And you want me to tell nobody, but you want me to help you get healed? You got to let me at least tell at least one more person. But we got to be able, I, when, when I have any illness, I'm telling y'all about it. I want everybody praying for me. I don't have no time to have all these secrets. That's why I think the greatest discipleship thing is to have a transparent life. Because it frees you of what people think. I don't care what they say or think. It frees you to be able to be transparent. You're not worrying about people. You just love God. 
And so, so too many of us are waiting for somebody to do something for us. And God's saying, no, uh, I have people assigned to your life. You don't know about it. Like when my dad left when I was six years old, I, you know, I used to be at the park waiting for my daddy to come at seven year old, eight years old. Now he still didn't show up. And I would start making up stories about my dad. My dad is a, a, a truck driver and he's traveling around the nation. He'll be coming back soon. Uh, he's a secret detective. He works for the CIA. Yeah, he, he got to work real hard. He'll coming around. And, I, and my creative mind was creating stories about it, but not realizing that God was sending me strong men in my life, raising me. My English teacher at 10th grade, Mr. Freeman, I told you, I told you all about it. That's the man I wanted to marry my mama. That, yeah, that dude. I was trying to arrange a marriage. He was tall, dark, handsome, with an afro, and he can speak like Shakespeare. Now, shall I can tell you the month of May? He was, not, he was romantic. I fell in love. I thought he was going to be my daddy. But we look for a father or a parent to do more for us but see, when you really understand Jesus, Jesus says, I can do more for you than even your earthly parents. And don't, don't, don't get broken. It hurts, but don't get stuck there. Remember that I see you, and I know what's going on, and I know the circumstance. And listen, I will send angels to help you. I will send men and women to help you, because there are gifts that are prepared to get you through. I'm not going to leave you to yourself. And it's the enemy's job to make it feel, make you feel like and make me feel like I've got to do all this by myself and why I don't have what she have or he have. No, no. God sees your circumstance. And God will respond and he will bless you and keep you because, listen, he doesn't want you to be in a deficit position. Oh, Jesus. He says, I save you that you may have life and have it more abundantly and so we call out to God for each other and finally we call out listen the truth to each other oh Jesus third Samuel 12 and 7 says that Nathan said to David you are the man David had sinned and Nathan the prophet had came to him and gave him a parable about his sin and then he called him I said you are the one who do the very thing you get ready to raise up and tear somebody up but it's you who I'm talking about and so when a church does not deal with each other's sins, then the sin spreads like a disease. We got to learn how to do it. Matthew 18 tells us how to do it. You have an order against your brother, go to one, right? And bring another, either bring them for the church. It doesn't mean bring them down here like the old school. They took that text and bring them out and embarrass them and shame them to death. And, and, and my church, in the United Holy Church, they would shame them. And I used to say, I see the girl, but where's the guy? They shame the women, but they protect the men. And that's out of order. You can't protect the men from the sin and shame the woman, especially when it comes to pregnancy and other issues. But I, I never saw any maybe one man in 30 years be before, before the church. It's like, interesting, where are the brothers? Because we're doing it too, y'all. Come on now. And so he's saying that we have to bring people into good deeds but we got to encourage it and all the more for the day is approaching. So I need to tell the truth to my brother and sister. I'm concerned about your behavior. I'm concerned about what you're doing. You need to understand that's dangerous. I don't think you should date that guy. I know a little bit more about him. He, he's from my neighborhood. And I, I want you to know he's dating at least three people right now. And he ain't really thinking about you. But he may be thinking about you. I don't think you should date her. She's not good for your spirit. And a lot of people don't want to hear, what do you know? Why are you getting in my business? But if you're your brother and sister, you got to be able to talk to each other about these things. But we, are, we don't have no tolerance. Because the reason why we don't have no tolerance is because we created suspicion. We, we have gossip. And we have envy and jealousy. And so you just mad that I got a man. That's your issue. No, I ain't mad that you got a man. I'm mad that you may die to that man. And lose yourself trying to please him. We call out the truth to each other. Look at Proverbs 27, verse 5 through 6 in the New Living Church uh, translation. This is what it says. It says, an open rebuke is better than hidden love. Ooh, Jesus. Process that. An open rebuke is better than hidden love. Wounds from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. 
Ooh, y'all have to process that. That's Proverbs 27. An open rebuke is better than hidden love. Wounds from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. And so we got to go. We got we to gotta come together to be better. Never being afraid to trust in an unknown future to a known God. Don't be worried about an unknown future to a known God. We've got to come together. And that's really the, the whole embodiment of who Jesus is and why the Hebrews are lifting him up as a perfect sacrifice. So when Jesus now uh, walks to earth for 33 years and uh, he's healing the sick and raising the dead and he's trying to uh, help everybody to see that the kingdom of God is now at hand and he's preaching a gospel in season and out of season and he's telling everybody he's about to die and go to the cross. He's trying to bring us all together. Uh, he's trying to bring us as one uh, under and in him and to be in Christ together. And, and so they, they take Jesus and they beat him to smithereens and uh, then they took him down the Via Della Rosa and, 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 and then publicly put him to shame and he, and he walks with heavy feet to down the Via Della Rosa bearing the cross and Simon next to him carrying some of the weight and he gets to the Calvary on Golgotha's Hill and they lifted him up from the ground after they nailed him down the ground they lifted him up with a rope on the cross and stretched him wide and hung him high so the whole world could see him in the middle uh, of a Two thieves, he died, the Bible says. He hung his head and died and committed his soul. And then they didn't realize uh, that when they buried him, they were planting him. And so on the third day, the Bible said he got up with all power in his hands. And so when you quote John 3, 16, you say, God so loved me? No, you say, God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten. So Jesus died for the whole world. And because he had the whole world in his blood. So you might not have to die by yourself. Jesus died that you may get up. And so you got to come together so we can be better. Because Jesus died that we can come together and be better. Jesus died that we can be one in him. So when we come to worship, we come knowing that we have authority and power to stick together. Jesus' blood is the glue that hold us together so don't let your brother down don't let your sister down love one another and love your church love your neighbor love your community and come together because jesus died that we may be together father i thank you i thank you that we can come into your sanctuary and we are not killed at the door because we walk in with sin but you open the veil to have a privilege to enter your presence and to worship together father forgive us all when we just trivially just don't want to be at church don't want to come don't want to be in your presence don't want to assemble ourselves together because we know that iron sharpens iron help us to take worship seriously jesus died to allow us to come to worship together we don't have to go through a priest we don't have to wait we don't have to wait for a certain day of the year of atonement. We don't have to wait for the tabernacle or the feast of tabernacles. Every day we can get in our car, come to church, and meet you where heaven and earth intersect. That commune with you and touch your heart with our songs and with our word. Touch your heart with our fellowship, with our breaking of bread, with our sound doctrine and teaching and preaching truth. God, what a privilege. I pray. That each friendship be a safe place where every disciple can grow and grow together and be a reflection of the Christ we serve. This is your servant's prayer in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. I pray.